Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of special webinars for students. Uh, it is a, um, a shame that we have to meet under such difficult circumstances, but I'm hoping that today we'll be able to give you all the answers you want about how you continue with your study or how you improve your study, or for some of you, um, how you begin to study. And that, that's uh, what the, today is all about to answer your questions, to tell you what we think we're doing so that you know what we're up to uh, and everything else. So first of all, to introduce myself, I'm Gary Carter. We do have some existing members on the line who are looking to add to their qualification. Welcome to you. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, I and my wife June set up the Institute 24 years ago uh, to be the leading voice for bookkeepers. And I'm very uh, pleased to say I believe we've achieved that. Uh, we are a, a worldwide organization, 134 countries across the world. Uh, one, um, uh, at, at, at least what, half a dozen or so members in each of them. So uh, joining me today, I have got uh, Peter Stewart. Peter, if you're there, uh, Peter is our ICB Director of Learning. And he joined us a while back to um, make sure that our syllabus was pertinent to bookkeepers and uh, that everything that we had worked to that common goal of making ICB bookkeepers the best bookkeepers anywhere on the planet, basically, uh, and to, to take over the, the whole uh, world of bookkeeping, which is our, um, our aim and to be the voice of bookkeeping. I'm also joined by a very special guest, uh, Gary Hobson. Good morning, Gary. Gary is the person who set up Training Link. Again, a, a husband and wife team there uh, with Sandra, who is the favorite person of virtually everybody at ICB because uh, she is an absolute uh, demon when it comes to detail and the information that we get is never ever wrong. Um, and she's always spot on, which uh, I, th I think we ought to get her to do some training courses in that for some of our other training providers, actually. But anyway, training links, uh, main claim to fame, I think, is that when we do our annual awards for Lucas, uh, those that you um, know us well enough that we provide an annual set of awards for the best in our profession across practices, training providers, uh, software companies or whatever it might be. And we give away the coveted Luca Award, which is a, a statue about sort of a foot high of Luca Pacioli, who 525 years ago invented double entry bookkeeping, which is now, even with today's computerization, is the basis of everything we do. And Gary, I think, and his team have more Lucas than even we have. Um, back at base, he, I, what have we got, Gary, now is it 12? Uh, training provider of the year, I think, was eight. Um, but if you add the tutor awards and student awards, it's it's well past a dozen. Yeah, it's yeah, closer to twenty, I think, when you when you put all of the everything together. But yeah, eight, eight for the, the the training provider. Yeah, very proud. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, that was training provider of the year, and. Um, this is not something that we decide who we like the look of and just award it to the, 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 the prettiest. It doesn't work like that. Uh, ICB actually puts a lot of effort into making sure we have an algorithm which dips into the database, takes the information out. So it's all sorts of things like number of students registered, um, but over and above that, how many of those achieve their goal of qualification? How many come into membership? What percentage of people get 100% in their exams. There's, there's a whole raft of things. And it churns this all together and comes out with the information. And so uh, Gary has come top of the pile nine times, as he says, just in that. So, um, so it's great to have him here. And what I want to do today is give you a quick rundown about what's happening at the moment during uh, COVID-19, what we're doing, and then Peter will be talking to you specifically about our level four, because I think most of the members who are on today are there to try and find out how to uh, move on their qualification. And the thing, uh, for those of you who are just starting, it's wonderful to have you with us. Some of you have only registered within the last two or three weeks, which is fantastic. And I want to 
um, and some of what I'm going to say this morning to you as well. But first of all, to say that ICB is, um, to all intents and purposes, still open for business. If any of you need to contact us, our standard telephone number of 0203 405 4000 is still the number to get us on. We are answering the calls. Uh, we're not physically in the office, as you can see. I'm, uh, the team is working from home, as am I. And we have picked up our phones, we've taken them home with us, plugged them into our routers, so we're all on site. We can all answer the telephone call. So if you telephone that number, it's as if you're ringing our main office. If you need to speak to any one, one of us, we can transfer the phones across. Or if you want to speak to one of our advisors or our external people, again, you can just be transferred across. And if you want to ring up and say, "Can I speak to your? Uh, can I speak to training?" Yeah, we can. We can actually transfer you through as well. So all of that is working. In addition to that, those of you who are ready to take your exams, all of our exams are also still available. They're online. You register in the normal way. There is no change to that at all. Um, you can take your exams right the way through from A1 through to M7. That's all done and dusted. Now, M8 is the only one that is slightly different because M8 was the exam that you went into a Pearson View Centre. And those of you who are already members will know that system works particularly well. However, COVID-19 being what it is, uh, those centres have now been closed. So what we have done, and uh, we've just had a briefing for our um, team at ICB just before we came online, and uh, Peter was telling us that we have now signed contracts with a, a proctoring company, which means that when you sit that final exam, the M8, and that's the one that brings you up into full membership, and that's where you can get your practice license, etc. Um, you can, you will link into your exam, but through the computer, we will look at you and see that you are the right person to do the exam. And I'm not sure how it all works, but basically it will follow your keystrokes and make sure that you're, you're not uh, giving it to your mate next door who's a fully qualified bookkeeper and getting them to do the work for you. So that's, that's how that works. The other thing to say that is, is still very, very much in full progress, and that is the branch network system. Those of you who haven't come across this yet, we have at the moment about 40 branches up and down the country. They're run by members, four members. And in the past, it's always been they've taken a town hall, local hotel, something like that, taken a room, and people have gone out of their, uh, left their offices, gone to be with the, the group for a couple of hours on a, a Monday night, Wednesday night, whatever it might be. That obviously can't happen now. So all of the meetings have gone virtual. So if you go onto your MyICB, it lists all the meetings, pick the one that's closest to you, or actually the one that you think it sounds the most interesting, and you can just sign into one of those meetings. There's no charge, but at times like this, it's very good for you all to be able to have the opportunity to meet and greet and see other people. So the meetings are very much like this, uh, a Zoom meeting where you will get somebody to talk to you. Um, but as a, what we've done today, because we've got so many on the line, and, and we tried it on the first day for our members, one that we opened it up. Uh, it was a bit like a, um, a hen pen or something that we couldn't pick, fit, figure out who was talking, etc. So now we've cut it back and you will you'll, can just put your questions to us uh, on the text and we will be scrolling through those during the, the meeting and talk to you. When you come to the branch meeting, it's a little bit more open because you'll normally get about 25 to 30 people in there and you, you'll be able to have direct conversations with people. And what I would say is that everybody that goes to a branch always says they would recommend the branch to somebody else. So that's a good recommendation in itself. So those of you who are feeling a little bit isolated or just want to see what um, other bookkeepers look like, um, then that's the way of doing it. In addition to that, in um, April, uh, end of April, May, we are having our Inspire Talk. Inspire Tour, again, we used to travel around the country to about 20 different cities, uh, giving you a, an absolutely jam-packed day full of uh, information, guidance, assistance, and learning. We can't do that, uh, so we are making that virtual as well. So you can get in, uh, involved with that by going onto your MyICB and, and booking up to come to that. 
Uh, there will be various promotional activities that go on around that, so, so please look out for those. And our flagship is always the summit, which takes place at the end of each year, and um, this year is no different. We are only just really starting to promote that because we've been waiting to see how things are going. Um, so all of the dates, how you get involved with that, that takes place in, that will be a live uh, conference we're talking at the moment. So this will come um, after, hopefully lockdown has been uh, relieved a little bit, and we're not quite sure whether that now is going to be June, July, August, September, whenever it might be. But our summit is time to come at the end of that night. I think by then you'll all need to see somebody other than your husband and your kids or your husband, your wife and your kids or whoever you've got there with you. And I think it would give you a great opportunity. And there, if we can get, uh, we normally have anywhere between uh, four and 600 of you in one room together. It's, it's a brilliant opportunity to meet people and just feel the buzz of being with other qualified bookkeepers. Um, so, Gary, if I can turn to you, really. Um, this is obviously a, a difficult time for some people. Um, their business has gone, or they are at least putting it into mothballs. They may have been uh, laid off. They may be furloughed by their company. But um, this is the time when actually we see quite an increase in demand for learning because people who suddenly not got their day job to do see this as an opportunity to catch up with the bits that they were missing. Is that what you're finding? Very much so. Um, certainly, well, not, number one, I'll, I'll just say that we, we're very fortunate. We, we've been set up this way for years where our tutors can all work remotely. So it's just business as usual. In terms of communication in the office, that's fine. It, it, it's still all connected. But what we have found, so, you know, certainly this month, is that certainly students are progressing much faster and more efficiently than they were before because they've got more time on their hands now. In other words, life has changed considerably for some of them. So we're seeing great progression. But what we're also finding a lot of, uh, I mean, we get quite a bit anyway, but more so this time, are students who perhaps fell by the wayside a little bit. Life got in the way and they, 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 they dropped off the studies. And now they have a little bit of time on their hands and they're thinking, oh, let's get into some training link, see if we can get started again. It's not a problem. Um, obviously, it depends on how much time has lapsed and where they got to with their studies prior. But we can, you know, we, we can always look at the situation and say, okay, look, you did this up to three years ago. We need to speak to the ICB just to make sure that your qualifications still stand. You had subscribed to us for four other courses. We will honor those. So you can come back and we pick back up Yes, there may be an extra exam to do, there, there may be extra fees involved, but you don't lose out on, on what you were planning to do three or four years ago. Uh, I think we had one yesterday from 2014. Um, a little more difficult, but we, we got this lady there um, and she was over the moon because she thought, well, I thought I'd lost everything. Um, no, the only thing you've lost really is some time and there, there is a, obviously a change in fees and things of that sort that occur, but it's certainly giving them something to fill the gaps with while they're sitting at home doing nothing. Yeah, I was looking at the figures last night. We've got some people that go back as far as 2000. Uh, I think we've got somebody in the 1990s. Um, and I, uh, there are various reasons, as you know. You, you've been doing this for a long time, as, as, as have, have I. Uh, people drop their learning for various reasons. Sometimes because they think perhaps it wasn't quite as easy as they thought it was going to be. There will be people who are like that. Um, some people feel that uh, life is getting in the way and they have to do other things first. So they get married, um, they have a family, uh, all this happens. And then lo and behold, one day they find this set of books in the corner that they, they want to um, suddenly take back up. Now, we are, uh, in order to help people who are doing this, we are... Uh, changing the three years to a five-year limit but really we are relying upon you and your fellow training providers to make sure that you get people on at the right level because they will talk to you about this and you and I both know that if you put a student in and they think right I want to run before I can walk and you need to teach them how to walk again first it doesn't work it's not in their best interest um, 
So I think there will be such a mixture of people. And, and I was, I, we, we started last night, June and I started last night going through uh, the list of people attending to try and find a common denominator. And as always, there basically isn't one. You've got a complete spread of people there from, as I say, some people who, um, let's be fair, years ago perhaps didn't like the training provider or felt they needed a bit more assistance. I'm glad to say that, um, you know, we have a completely different set of training providers now, I believe. And uh, we have been able, by working with you and the others, to be able to say, look, this is, this is best in practice. This is what we need to do. And I know your system nowadays, um, you know, you've got lots of lessons throughout where you test people, you give them. And the thing about testing people is, yes, you're testing them to see if they've made the grade. But that actually is good for them because they know they've made the grade. They know they're on the right track. And I think when um, we first started this, and we, we used um, some training providers, um, most of whom are no longer around. Um, it was very much a, right, you start on day one, you work for however long it takes you, and then there's one exam at the end of that. Well, now that we've, we've broken that down a little bit, it sounds as if you're doing more exams, but actually I, I, I think it's, it's far better. You know, it, it's, it's like driving along the motorway. Nowadays there are um, services every sort of 10 or 15 miles, whereas in the old days you, you, you got on at London, got off at Manchester, and there was no stopping. And I think our exams are very similar, so... Um, I think that's good. I mean, when you're doing your, you, you do everything that we do at the moment, don't you? You do all of our qualifications, which is great. And one of the questions that has just come up here, I noticed was, uh, when will the level four um, textbooks be available? I think you've got some good news. Um, we've got some good news on that. They're actually coming out. Um, they're posted out next week, but you can now purchase them online. And you, you're doing your own level four course as well, Gary, now. That's right. Yes. Yes. I mean, I mean, we have we've got the study text, and obviously we have it as a as a full blown course as well. We've got all the bells and whistles and all of the resources. So effectively, I don't I don't think there's anything actually in the ICB catalogue of qualifications that we don't cover. Um, but again, you know, just just repeating really what you're saying there. It, it's important for for us to establish at what point someone should be coming in, because it's all well and good saying, well, I think I can do this particular element of level four. But if they haven't done certain prerequisites, they're going to find it extremely difficult. And that's why, you know, well, we've been doing this for over 20 years now. And, and you know, we're very experienced at it. So we know historically what students can cope with and what they can't. And fine, you know, if someone insists and says, no, I'm fine, I, I can do this, that, 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 that's absolutely fine. But we would we like to advise people and say, look, you really should do another little module here just to make sure that you fully understand the next one that you're going into. And I think to, to a certain extent over the years, historically, changes in syllabus um, can sometimes create small gaps. Not intentionally, it's just the way it, it, it falls. And yeah. sometimes that little gap in knowledge can cause problems for people progressing. But, you know, yes, both yourselves and we have the, the text, uh, the materials and the support available to help people to get to that next stage. Yeah, I, don't, I think that we've always tried not to uh, sort of swap things around so we sort of cheat people of the qualification they thought they were aiming for. But I think over the years, in consultation with our tutors, our training providers, the students, the members, the businesses, uh, sometimes you think, well, well actually, that particular um, level, say, I don't know, it used to be the old A, uh, was it the M4 or something other people found was a very big chunk of learning and we broke that down. So, you know, you ended up with, we ended up what, with nine exams instead of the old uh, original four. Um, and that's to make it better so that people can understand they can get uh, a certain amount of knowledge, be tested on that then at the next level again. And the M8 that we do at the moment is an overriding exam anyway. So it tests everything that you've done so far. Just make sure before we let you out there with the MICB after your name that you, you've got it all, you've remembered it, you can do a bit of everything and that's great. But I do stress to everybody and, and some of the members that are on will no doubt back me up with this. Um, it's like teaching you to drive. 
you learn to drive, you get out on the road, and then all of a sudden you realize that how little you know, and you are on a constant learning curve. And we can't wait until you know everything, because I'm not sure we know what everything even is. But uh, so we give you the, uh, it's not the basic tools, we give you a strong set of tools to do the job with, and we put you out there. Uh, and then uh, the rest of that then, with our support, is working together with you to, to get you your uh, your job or to get you your practice, get you set up in business or whatever. And um, funnily enough, we've just had a, um, uh, one of the messages that's come through, one of the questions is from Kat, who says, can I ask, could you please run the business builder day again, please, either on loan or after lockdown? Um, I missed it when it was run a few years ago. Uh, Kat, yes, I'm pleased to say that Business Builder is part of our plan. It was anyway part of our plan. The Business Builder was run by Paula Beasley smith who's our uh, chairman of council, actually. And uh, she is itching to come out and do some more. Uh, she now has, uh, obviously, locked herself down at home, but she will be doing something on that very shortly. So... We will send information out to everybody when that happens, but we've got a lot of other people who are providing us with new materials that will be part of what we're doing. And actually, something like that will feature in the Inspire Tour. So the Inspire Tour is pretty heavy learning. So it's business builder, it's about systems, it's about running your practice better, it's about how you use software to improve what you're doing and various other things. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's a it's a moving feast, but we will be there. Um, now, we if you want to start sending us any in, uh, queries that you have, this is the first one of these that we've done. And as I say, when I was trying to figure out how to pitch this last night, I realised that we've got the complete gambit of member with us. We'll do the level four uh, thing shortly. But if you've got any questions on um, where to get started or particular problems that you've got, please start sending those in on the questions and I'll start going through these questions in a moment. Um, I think the main thing, Gary, I think you'll, you'll agree with me, is that a lot of people having got to a point where they were either finding it difficult or um, they didn't like to ask the same question again or they felt embarrassed by something or other, stop doing this and then the longer they stop doing it the harder it gets to get back on and start it again um and yeah i mean you get this all the time people saying i've i've got off the the treadmill i've got to start again uh, how how do you talk to these people what what do you tell them to do it's quite a difficult one because uh, you know everyone as, as we know is different it's a different circumstance uh, sometimes, yes, it could be embarrassment. Uh, it's, it's been such a long time I didn't like to. Um, and th there isn't really anything specific that we can do to encourage people to, to give us a call and get in touch. Uh, because we don't know who those people are necessarily. Um, yes, we have follow-up emails that go through our customer relationship manager, where it's a little prompt to say, hi, we haven't heard from you for 60 days, 90 days, a year. Now. That's about all we can really do. Um, some people reply, some don't. But it, it's quite a strange that, you know, when, when, we, when we look at someone's history in, in our CRM, as an example, say someone who's come back since 2017, we can see in there that we have contacted these people. It just wasn't right for them at that time. Um, but again, all of a sudden, they've decided, great, I want to do this now pick up the phone, speak to Training Link or the ICB to see what can get going again. So I don't think there's any particular trigger for it. Um, it it's a case of people have to kind of, I mean, it'd be good if we could inspire them a little bit and say, hey, you know, uh, you remember this, that little dream that you had a few years ago, time to get it back on track because we don't know the circumstance. Um, you know, it could be I'm caring for a relative now. Uh, my, my, my child got ill my, or, you know, there's so many things that, that, that occur in people's lives today that suddenly make this the secondary thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's true. And uh, we, at the Institute, we get a lot of calls from people who, <clears throat> I suppose, pluck up the courage to come back. And, and last year, I noticed when we were traveling around the country and I was doing the Inspire Tour, 
uh, we were calling out, we were speaking to members and, uh, in the audience, and we had quite a large percentage of the audience that were coming back. And they, they, they weren't quite sure, but they came along and they were a little bit nervous, but they suddenly realized that we are actually a very friendly community. Although everybody in there, um, you know, you don't know them yet, but you get to know people very quickly. And in this, this time of lockdown, that will be done virtually, but nonetheless, you can still meet people, you can talk to people, you can learn from their experience. I mean, we've got some members on today who've been with us for 10 years, 15 years or whatever. And, you know, they're still learning today. They will openly admit that. And they're on today because they're thinking about doing an extension to their qualification. But, you know, members have a good life out of being bookkeepers. They enjoy what they do and they are needed. They're a necessary part of small businesses. And small business people swear by their bookkeeper. You know, I... I Trust my bookkeeper implicitly is something we hear very, very regularly. So it is, it is, a, it is a good career. That's something you've got to think about. Um, but what I would say is if any of you there, we, we've got one or two, and, and uh, you know, we are approaching some of our people that uh, we haven't seen for a while. We'll be approaching people on a regular basis anyway. But one or two of the people I noticed purchased a course and have not done anything. Now, that is quite unusual. I mean, most people have a bash and then something crops up. But people have bought a course and not done anything. Um, and, you know, you've made quite a large investment. We need, um, and you've thought about it. You obviously thought you might want to be a bookkeeper. You've obviously done a, quite a lot of research, I would presume. So, you know, I'm disappointed in a way that we've not done something to to keep you going with us. So we will be getting in touch we will try and do this and if it turns out that you know and gary needs to close his ears at this stage you don't like your training provider or you didn't like your training provider and that's why you stopped then we need to talk to you about well what exactly was it you didn't like you know um and and find you somewhere else and you know, uh, to be absolutely honest i mean I, I can't remember anybody ever saying that they don't like um, training it, which which is good, which is why they keep winning all the awards. But you know, occasionally there can be a clash of personality, or somebody says something to you, and it was the wrong time and the wrong place, and all the rest of it. Um, and and therefore you say, oh right, okay, and you cut off your nose to spite your face, you put it down, you don't do it again. Whatever the reason is, we can do something about it. If it was that you decided you didn't want to be a bookkeeper, you wanted to go be a brain surgeon or something rather, then fair enough. That's that's one of those. Uh, big decisions we make in life and, and and you know good luck but if you still have that underlying either desire or thought that you might like to do this um then i think we can help you and that's the main thing please keep in touch with us ring us at the office we'll have a chat with you i mean we deal with this on a daily basis you're not out there in, sitting there by yourself the only one that's ever made the decision to give it up or the only one that ever got nervous and stopped um you know there are thousands of you out there so really don't worry about it we're going to talk to you and we will do whatever we can to help you to make sure you get back into studying or you know whatever it is we need to do with you so i, I must stress that and everybody that uh, speaks to our uh, team uh, at uh, icb office wherever those offices may now be have always said that we're, we're very friendly. And I think as an organization, uh, because uh, we formed the, my wife and I, June, who's sort of sitting here uh, working away at the moment, because we actually formed the organization, you know, we, we have a, we, we feel as if you are a, a, not only a community, you know, you're part of our extended family, if you like. And we take it personally that people do well. And obviously, therefore, when people are quite succeeding the way they want you to, we like, really do genuinely want to find out what it is that's stopping you and help you if we can um now i'm just looking here uh are certificates still being sent out during this time says Gemma baldwin Gemma, yes they are coming out i can't say they're coming out as fast as they did in the past and we don't really have as much control as we used to do but bear with us um, and uh, we, will, we will get everything to you as quickly as we can. Anything that you achieve will be on your personal record, your PERC, P-E-R-C, which is personal 
um, education record certificate. Um, I had to make that up to fit with the word perk, but anyway. Um, so if you are going for a job and people are still going for interviews or virtual interviews at the moment, you can get access to that. You can show that you've achieved something. Even at this moment in time, you don't quite get the certificate. And the other question that somebody's just come up with is about the uh, practice license. How quickly a practice license is coming out now? Well, the turnaround is very quick, provided we have all of the information. Now, I know some of you who are uh, wanting to apply now to get a practice license um, are finding it difficult to get the DBS. That's the... Um, proof that you have not got any form of criminal conviction, which would debar you from being a, a bookkeeper, which we have to have. Now, I understand that all of this 750,000 people that have decided they would like to donate their time to the government have to go through a DBS check. So there is rather a lot of overcapacity there at the moment, and, and it is taking a while. We can't issue the certificate without that. Uh, because we're not allowed to uh, by law. Now, <clears throat> what I would suggest is that you get your practice license application in, it's in the system, and then we will wait until we can marry up the DBS with your uh, uh, license. If you're thinking of applying for your license very soon, as soon as you do that last exam and you hopefully pass it and be ready, it might be a good idea to apply for the DBS now. It has to be uh, a certificate which is no more than three months old when we see it for the first time. So uh, if you could gauge that, um, that might uh, that might help you. Okay, so um, let's have a look if we've got a few here. Hi, could you please explain the changes to the syllabus at the end of last year, says uh, Anonymous. Um, I completed the ABA 9 exam in February 19 to get my member status. Am I now less qualified by the, because of the syllabus changes? No, absolutely not. Um, it's just a different name for the syllabus because what we've decided is that in future our syllabus should reflect the level of membership. So uh, we, we now make uh, A, 1, 2, and 3, that is associate, then M, four five six seven eight that is member and then uh, that that's all it is it's just reflecting it makes it easier so people can say oh yes i'm doing an a so i must be working towards associate i'm doing something with m at the beginning i must be working towards member it's as simple as that and that was brought in not just for fun it was brought in to tie in with the very slight changes that we made to the syllabus because one of the things that we've done is the m8 now when you become a full member, that means that you are able to work with both sole traders and limited companies, as well as partnerships and everything else. So rather than separate those two businesses and give you a qualification and, and you, you take on your practice license and then you get a limited company come to you and say, oh, I can't do that. I can only do uh, sole traders. By bringing the two together into the cumulative M8, it now means that you can take on any type of business when they come to you. And where this became particularly uh, pertinent was that a lot of our members started with companies that were, were sole traders, and those sole traders grew and then decided they wanted to become limited, and they were having to say, oh, well, I can't now do your bookkeeping. And that was silly. We didn't want to do that. So, uh, But rather than say, you've only learned about sole traders, but you can now go and do limiteds, we'll let you get away with it. We're, we're amalgamating that into the... The syllabus. Gary, I mean, I think the, the syllabus transition, transition, I'll get the word right in it, transition has actually worked quite well. Yes, I think it was uh, a lot easier this time and to a certain degree there was a better balance with it as well. Um, simply because some elements that were better off in level two dropped down into level two. And I think it, it kind of repeats what you've said earlier on about the M4, where the old uh, the A4 was actually quite heavily loaded. So a couple of items were taken out of that and dropped down into level two, which was actually a better place for it to be, which then made the level three transition again a little bit lighter. Um, I think it's important that 
obviously, you know, we, we, we've evolved over the years in terms of we've learned from the students. And if you give a student something that's going to take them three years to do before they get a certificate, then it becomes a very hard slog. So by breaking them down into smaller units so that you have, you have achievements along the way, it actually encourages better progression. Students don't fall off as much and they do actually get through to goal. Um, yes, they may have had to have taken six or seven exams instead of four, but they still felt an awful lot better about it and managed to progress. So it isn't just the content of the syllabus, it's the order in which, how it's packaged up, if you like. So it becomes a, 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 a unit of achievements as you're going along. And I think it, it works really, really well. Um, um, I've got a question here from Toby. Hi, I've just passed my MA and intend to continue on to the level four diploma, but I'm now also thinking about moving into practice and at the very least beginning to write my business plan. There are tools on the ICB website under developing your business that I'm sure would be useful in writing my business plan and moving forward into practice, but access is denied to non-practice license holders. I'm unlikely to practice for some time, so why not make the tools available to students? Um, that's a difficult one, Toby. Uh, the main thing is that under the current legislation, we have to make sure that people do not, we don't assist people to start a practice before we've actually authorized them to be in practice. And it's very much a chicken and egg situation. Um, the law is that you now, as a bookkeeper or an accountant or even a lawyer or whatever, you have to be authorized by a professional body before you can practice. And what we found, what we have found over the years is that some people think, oh, that's all right. I've, I've got my first exam. I know everything about bookkeeping. I'll now set myself up in practice. Well, first of all, they didn't know enough. They normally were the people that got into all sorts of problems. But now because of legislation, that's an illegal act. And you can find yourself with heavy fines or in some cases, um, a, a potentially a, a custodial sentence. So we don't want our members to get into that. Um, the other thing is that although you're getting through your exams and I understand where you're coming from, that's great. If you come into membership, you then have years of membership under your belt. And if you go into a situation where you're being employed or you and get your practice started, how long have you been a member is quite often asked. So if you say a week and a half, when in fact you could have been a member two years ago, it makes a big difference. And the other thing is that once you become a member, yes, you can link into far more support because of these restrictions we have, um, government restrictions, you can get far more support. And um, that is, that is the best way for it to be. We have, it's the best ways we see of controlling it because we have a lot of members out there that have been members of for years and years and years and they've done it properly and they've set up their business properly and they've used the tools that we give them and you know, there's a huge amount of tools there that are available. But what we don't want is people trying to buck the system a little bit, do that and then uh, you know, harming the reputation of, of bookkeepers uh, across the board really. Um, uh, I started doing a bookkeeping qualification in South Africa through the ICB. Unfortunately, with difficult circumstances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I won't read out your circumstances. I'm just making sure I'm not giving any um, personal history away here. Uh, I'm currently a qualified, certified uh, QuickBooks online advisor. I'm planning to move to the UK in the future. I'm a British citizen. I would like to know what starting point of qualification I must do through ICB UK. Um, that's um, somebody who is anonymous again. Uh, very nice to hear from you uh, from all the way across in, in, in Africa, South Africa. Uh, you need to send us copies of your certificates. You can email them to us, scan them, email to us. We'll have a look at what it is you've done and what we will do rather than give you an off the cuff answer because it's not that simple with a uh, qualification for a different country. We will actually write back to you and say, right, tick, 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 you need to do this. And, and we'll, we'll tell you what that is. And then we'll also tell you how to get that information, how to, how to uh, follow through. The one thing that we always do, we have members, as I said before, in 134 countries around the world. And the qualification stands. But if they're moving to a different country, we always say, whichever country you're moving to, we'll expect you to do some sort of bridging exam to make sure that you understand the uh, intricacies of uh, 
bookkeeping in that particular country. So say, for example, we have a, a, a very large number of members in Australia, and we get a lot of Australian people who come across here to work. Um, now, we have pay you earn they have um, pay you go We have VAT, they have goods and service tax. There's not a lot of difference, but we, we don't want to release somebody into this country uh, who doesn't know exactly how to work the British system, and, and vice versa, if somebody moves over to Australia from the UK, uh, they'd be laughed off the pitch if uh, they were starting talking about VAT or pay as you go. Nobody would understand it. So it's, it's little things like that. And also sometimes different treatment of the way companies work and what companies can or can't do and what information you need to give to government. So uh, a bit of a long answer there, but send us the information now. Start preparing now. And we'll tell you what's missing because it could be that, uh, you know, you're, you're fine. I mean, you've actually said that you've done our, our course anyway, so you've done it remotely. It could be that it's all there. Um, but I, I don't want to, without looking at the facts, I, I don't want to go uh, and give you a, a definite yes or no at the moment. Uh, right, I'm thinking about embarking on the route to qualify as a bookkeeper instead of a bookkeeping practice. Brilliant. That's Pedro Silva. Hi, Pedro. But I have a quick few questions about the business itself, competition, potential for growth, earning potential. Is there anyone in ICB I could speak with? Yes, Pedro, anybody really at ICB. It's what we deal with on a daily basis. Um, there are, in this country, there are just over 5 million small and medium, uh, small and micro businesses. Uh, so there's plenty of scope out there. Our members tell us, uh, those that are in practice already or those of them who want a job, basically saying that there's so much business available. Now, at the moment, obviously, everybody is on lockdown. But when the, the lock is released and, and we're, we're able to carry on our lives um, somewhere like how we used to do it, then there are still going to be a lot of business people out there. All of the services we needed before lockdown, we're going to need after lockdown. All of the people that we needed before lockdown, again, we're going to need. So um, I don't, at the moment, see any shortage of business out there. And when I talk to members of branches or conferences or whatever, um, business is booming. It, well, it was booming. You know, it's, it's taken a bit of a hiccup at the moment, but now's a good time perhaps to get everything in place and be ready to go. So with the DBS check, do you need an enhanced one or a basic one only? Just the basic one? Um, you just get yeah, just get the basic one and send that through to us, and you can send that to us online. But if you get it, don't sit on it without copying it, because I understand that if you don't take it off the the DBS system, that it disappears after I think it's three weeks or something. Else. So download it, send it to us. We'll put it onto your file. Access. So that was Andrea Barber. Thank you, Andrea, for that. Um, I did level three with the old syllabus that didn't include limited company bookkeeping. Can I take on limited company clients now? That's Rishi Kara. Uh, not unless you feel competent to do so. I say that because uh, there is a, a small difference between limited companies and uh, sole traders. You need to be aware what those differences are. You can do a, a top up, you can do some CPD. Um, technically, we are saying that you are a full member and people will presume that you can do this, obviously. But like everything else in bookkeeping, you have to feel competent in what you're doing. And that's down to you. You know whether you feel right in doing it. And uh, nowadays, the, uh, the, the onus is not just upon the person you, for whom you're doing the books. Uh, it's not their responsibility if something goes wrong. It's the preparer. So it is the bookkeeper. So you need to be careful. Um, have we got Peter online? Are you around, Peter? No, not at the moment. Okay, we'll get Peter back in a moment. Um, where do you go for the DBA? Yes, Gary, Gary I, am, I am online. Sorry, I was looking at some of the questions and I couldn't find the unmute button. Right. Well, I'm thinking that you perhaps ought to be answering some of these. You know, uh, want to give me a break. Two, three, but the, hello, Peter. Anyway, hi. hi. So, uh, Peter Stewart, this is our Director of Learning. Um, a, a new position with ICB and uh, stepping into partially into the into the footsteps of um, 
uh, Jackie Mount, who has, uh, well, she says retired. I mean, it, it, there's no such thing really. Right. She's still working away, as those of you will know. She's been recently on the, uh, the daily TV program we've been doing. Uh, but she has, um, she now lives out in, in the, the depths of Kent, not far from the coast, uh, where she works from her office there. And so we, she still does a lot of work with us, but she's not uh, as involved in the day-to-day -day stuff because she was she was moving away but anyway peter hi some good questions coming i think yeah i i say i, I was um I've, I've responded to a few of them and i was getting a bit carried away there which is why i was still on mute when uh, when it, it came through i think i think before i do anything about level four i think there's a there's a bit of a theme from some some of the questions that are coming down the the um the chat panel on the right about about people who have done some study up to a point and maybe left it two years, four years, five years. I think one of the first one was um, Stephen, uh, who, who, who's about 10 years has passed since they've done <laughs> okay. this. And, um, and uh, lockdown or no lockdown, this is something that, that I've had conversations with Gary and, and, and others about over a while. Um, and, and obviously, you, you know about this internally is that we've refreshed the syllabus we've got the syllabus looking in a good place we've got level four qualifications or cert cert certificates in um and it, i thought this was probably a good time to go out to people like stephen who got to a certain point and and one reason or another let it slip i've, I've seen messages in the chat box about uh, people having children and people's children having children, so taking breaks for grandparenthood, which is fantastic, but now wondering whether they can pick things back up. And obviously, we we know how the syllabus has evolved over that time. And um, we were talk we we've been talking about getting um, getting in contact with with people like Stephen and others. Who haven't been with us in a while and saying look you did something the fu fundamentals of, of bookkeeping the debits and the credits haven't changed in the last 10 years they haven't changed in 525 years um so you know you can revise you can go and pick pick things up and and training partners like uh like training link are very very good at understanding where somebody is um and, and helping them get back on the bus and move on to take the qualification um, if that's what they want to do now. So, um, so yeah, we, we, we are looking at the communications that we can get to people. We hope that we'll have answers for, for everyone. To say, look, if you're interested now, don't worry if it was 10 years, five years, two years since you, you last did an exam. There is a, a corresponding point of entry for you that we can we can look at. Mm -hmm. Gary Hopston, not two Garys on the call, but Gary Hopston will be able to get one of his tutors to to look at um, look at your your current level of knowledge, your how much you remember. I spent a very long time not doing double entry, and it's surprising how quickly it can come back to you. Um, so, so that, I mean, that's the first thing for people who are somewhere within level two or level three, um, that there are opportunities for you to get back in. Don't worry about how long it's been since you've been studying because th there is a, a bit of hand holding and you will surprise yourself. Um, it's maybe not quite like riding a bike, um, mm -hmm. but debits are still on the left, credits are still on the right, but uh, it, it's 30 something years since I did my first bookkeeping course and people have invented computers since then so there is some difference um, and, and of course the, the qualification has stayed relevant it's modernized it knows we know that the bookkeeper in practice will be using zero or QuickBooks or Sage and therefore the qualification is built around that that understanding so I know there's an awful lot of questions. I can see the number mounting up. I think I, I knocked off about four when you were talking, Gary. Um, and I started when it was showing 10, it's now showing 19. So 
yeah. great engagement from everyone. Yeah, I so, mean, they are pretty good. And one of the questions that we get quite regularly, just had one there, I, I'm halfway through the old syllabus, uh, I'm ready to start doing some exams, can I transfer to the new syllabus? Um, yeah, everything like that, we don't do this to be difficult, um, and we have transition routes through either with the training providers or that we can sort out. Basically, there's something there for you to, to take, yes? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it may be that if, if you want to sort of reassure yourself of your um, previous learning, we won't make you retake an exam that you've already certified, but, but so that you can progress. I think, you know, say Gary might have tutorials. We've got mock exams so you can, you know, you can remind yourself of the, the ideas um, that, that you covered and, and test yourself with questions and see the feedback that the mock exams have. I just saw Gary Carter's light fitting is there. I hope nothing's broken. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. The perils of working from home. Here, the ceiling, think, yeah. the ceiling, yeah. Um, there, yeah, yeah. So you know, it, there, there, there's, it, 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 it will be easy. It will be easy for you to get back on the horse. Um, we've got support from wonderful partners like Gary, um, and and yeah, I mean, it, it's a strange opportunity that that's come about with everyone locked down, but it's also good to see that a lot of people are saying well I started this so yes I can finish it and you can everyone can it's, it's a it's a great qualification and at least a very flexible career for, for people beyond so I'd, I'd urge everyone to, to chase up the opportunities to continue. Can I just say hello to uh, John Adele um, he's actually in today from the Philippines so hi John Adele uh, good to uh, good of you to come wow. in and join Hope all's doing well there. John Adele Ocampo. So we have a very strong uh, membership base in the Philippines and uh, uh, some fantastically very committed people out there. You know, they, they uh, love doing exams. They love uh, uh, improving their bookkeeping skills. So it's great to have you there. And I'm getting some notes past me at the moment, but I'm, uh, so I'm catching up. But... Uh, Peter, what time, what time are we now? 10.53. If, shall we cover the uh, level four on the hour so that it gives us another couple of minutes just to answer a few of these questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I saw there's a, there's a couple of questions and I've, I've replied on one or two of them about the M7 and M8, particularly the M8. Um, as, as, as you're aware, Gary mentioned, it, M8 is a centre-based exam. We use Pearson View so that we've got the top level of exam security and vigilation, supervision, identity control for that exam, which is important to us because it is the admission to membership. It's the thing from which you get your practice license. And yeah. if that isn't administered strongly, then, um, then, then there, are, there, are high, there are high risks for the members and, and for our own reputation. But we have, um, or we are in the process of setting up a, a, um, a system whereby you will be able to take the M8 exam at home or any other quiet place where you can get yourself a, um, a reliable internet connection, steady internet connection. Um, we hope to be able to confirm the steps for that. Um, but it, it will have, it will have, what we call remote proctoring, um, where effectively we take control of your laptop. Well, we don't take control of it, you still do the typing, but we can see what's happening on that through the webcam. So, you know, throughout, if you're looking at me taking an exam, you'll see if I start doing this or if I start, I go on to mute, we have to have the microphone on. And the other thing is that, that we would have your smartphone taking a, uh, uh, an image of your surrounding, so um, you won't be like that. Um, that correspondent was it in Singapore whose family broke in through the the door and and started interrupting his broadcast on the BBC. Um, so, uh, fingers crossed, um, everything's going well. We're, we're having a meeting this afternoon whereby we'll be looking at the technology that's involved and see if we can load up the exam onto the system. So. 
I'm, I'm hopeful that from next week we will be able to set the M8 exam for anyone who's waiting for it. Um, and who knows, this could be the, the future of examination. Yeah. Um, just going back to John Adele from the Philippines, he's actually then asked a question. Uh, yes, as you've got to MICB, the level four is the next thing for you to, to take on. And um, Peter will be talking about that very shortly. Uh, just something here coming in from June, apparently this is a question about I don't, I don't have any uh, proof of ID and, and I still want to become a member. Unfortunately, um, we have to have proof of ID. We need uh, a photographic proof of who you are. We need to do some research into you before you can become a member. Um, these are the new rules. It's the anti-money laundering regulations that have really honed in on this and made us uh, more uh, strict than ever. Uh, but it, there has to be a way that you can get an ID. Uh, if you're in the UK, you can normally go into the post office with various documents and they will give you uh, proof of ID. They'll sign something that can be sent to us. But you need to, you need to be um, a normal person with normal ID if you want to be a bookkeeper because you're going into businesses, you're asking them to trust you implicitly, they're going to give you their information, their life story, you're going to know everything about them from inside leg measurement up. And that is all about um, trust. And, and I have to say that if you can't find a way of proving who you are to us as your institute, then we can't authorize you to go out and um, talk to businesses um, and, and expect them to, to trust you or us to trust you. So there has to be a way around it, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Uh, surely you have a driving license or if you don't have a passport, as I say, we can do something to the post office. But that is an absolute basic requirement. And, and we have to have that and we have to keep it on file and, and we have to know who we are working with. Uh, Peter, do you want to... You've got a presentation to do on the level four. Do you want to kick in on to the presentation? Yeah, I will do that. You bear with me just a second. I think that's everything up alive. So um, <clears throat> yeah, please, please keep filling in questions as, as we go on. But um, I just wanted to sort of take stock of where we are with um, level four, with our, our certificates at level four and the diploma which can lead out of level four. And I think it's, it's important to distinguish between what goes on at level four with separate certificates and the diploma to what you're familiar with from level two and level three. So level two is a set of three exams that leads to a qualification. Level three is a set of five exams that leads to a qualification on their own a level three exam, let's say M4, doesn't really count for all that much in terms of what you can do. Once you've got through level three um, and you can, you can apply for MICB and then you can get your practicing license, that's that. Level four is slightly different. So let me talk through where we're at. So we've just uh, recently um, launched a fresh suite of exams um, and certificates in level four, there is one that's still kicking around. Um, let me try and move the screen on. So yeah, uh, I'd say it's a diploma and it's not a diploma. It's a little like Schroding, Schrodinger's qualification in that we have four certificates. Three of them are new to, to us. Um, financial statements, I'll go into a little bit more detail of the content in a moment. Financial statements, corporation tax and self-assessment tax are new level four certificates. Um, we still have a management accounting certificate, which is on the shelf, but I'm working on um, updating that to something fresh and more relevant to the bookkeeper. Now, we talk about them as being standalone qualifications because there's no need or no compulsion to do three or four or any combination or any individual number. It's whatever suits you, it's whatever interests you, um, and hopefully anyone that you do will enhance what you can do as a practicing bookkeeper. However, 
the bit where the diploma comes in is if there are, if you do have three certificates under your belt, then that leads to the award of the diploma in advanced bookkeeping and accounting. So it becomes a level four qualification that you can, you can compare to, to others. So a little bit more about who is, is eligible for them. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to an audience of MICB uh, aspirants, members, associates, affiliates. Um, so it, it is highly, highly relevant um, to you. Um, notice that it is for MICB and it doesn't matter what route you've taken to get there, exemption route, old exams, recent exams. If you've got MICB after your name, then we ask no further questions. You are entitled to, to move on and take any of these certificates. But we are, um, we, we are attracting people with other backgrounds. And, and you know, again, strangely enough, as, as Gary Huxton was saying earlier on, you know, people are showing a, 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 a fresh energy in studying. And we've got a few inquiries of people who are within the IEB or the AAT systems and elsewhere they're saying because we've got exams that we can we can offer now we, we're not center based and, and therefore waiting for the lockdown to finish then some people are saying oh i can get a qualification with with icb so it, it's um a little bit more open but you know i'm, I'm speaking to icb people so to say that that doesn't hugely affect you so why would you take a certificate your, your MICB takes you to a certain level, or if you've done MA, it takes you to a certain level. Each of the certificates gives you further skills that you can take out to clients. And therefore you can charge more or you can do more hours with clients providing these additional services, or you can attract in extra clients. And the other thing, I mean, we have had some people who kind of just like the idea of bookkeeping and want to know more about it. So there is a, a personal, professional learning development that you can undertake by doing these, these certificates. Each of the certificates, and to, to a little bit more detail, the financial statement certificate has got a bracket after it, it says for micro and small businesses. What this um, prepares you to do and allows you to do is um, to file, complete and file financial statements under FRS 102, brackets one, bracket A, and FRS 105. 102 is the small businesses um, financial reporting standard. 105 is for the micro uh, businesses. There are a lot of similarities and there are some differences between them in the terminology, how things are disclosed and so on but the, the course covers both. Um, and, and then as I say that with the certificate under your belt, that is a, a, a task that you can perform. That's a, a service you can provide to limited small and micro businesses. Moving on, the corporation tax, also for micro and small businesses. Now there isn't a difference uh, in terms of the, the corporation tax as, as there was for the standard. There's not a, a 102 and a 105 equivalent. Um, <clears throat> but again, if you take the corporation tax, then you can speak to clients about completing their tax returns and submitting them for them. Moving on, the third new level four certificate is the self-assessment tax. Um, and I saw again in the query box, and I think I answered a couple of the queries, um, We've had level three self-assessment tax. That is on its way out. The last few candidates are, are taking the level three SAT. Um, and we've, we've lifted a level. So effectively it does the same as level three SAT did. It addresses the, the, you know, the annual tax return for private individuals, for sole traders, for partners, um, partnerships. Um, and it's calculate the tax liability, submit the tax return for, for those, those people. Um, I'll talk a moment about the, the link from level three to level four, or the, the, the progression. 
But those are the three new um, certificates. We've got the existing management accounting um, certificate, which moves away from the, the world of regulation. Um, and it, it, again, it's added value that bookkeepers can provide to, to their clients by telling them about what's going on behind the numbers and looking forward, doing planning, doing uh, decision making and doing control. Uh, I'd say that, that syllabus is being replaced later in the year uh, um, with one that will be slightly more focused, well, a lot more focused on the types of clients that our bookkeepers have and the work that they're doing. Currently, it's a little bit more generic um, and, and there are similarities to the, the management accounting certificates you'd have at AAT and, and ACCA, which are a little bit more jack of all trades. Talk about big businesses, international corporates and so on. So it's not entirely relevant. So that, that's up for, for renewal, but it, it's still, if you've done it, this, might, this conversation is relevant to you. If you've got the books for it and you're thinking about taking the exam, the conversation is still relevant. So let me carry on. The new certificates, um, in, in whichever order you want, on the right hand side there, they're like most of the exams that we've got throughout our core qualification. You would be doing them at home, doing them at your workplace or library or somewhere that you can, you can get online and have a, a certain amount of time of peace and quiet to do that. Financial statements is a three hour exam. The two tax exams allow you 24 hours. You can use um, you know, resources to find the, the correct rates that you should be using, the allowances that are given and so on because come to the point in the middle, and this is the same with all of our exams, we are simulating what a bookkeeper does for work. You know, a client probably doesn't expect the bookkeeper to know all the rules and all the regulations around tax and all the allowances to the penny and whatever. So a client wouldn't be surprised if the bookkeeper looked up the tax rates while they were doing the work. In fact, they'd probably be reassured that they were doing that. So, so we've got tests that simulate what the bookkeeper is doing. Complete this financial statement, complete this tax computation, and so on. Um, we use objective testing, which means that for most of our exams, the, um, the computer does the marking, and that's certainly the case for, for all the level four certificates. So there's, and it's the same platform as you would have done if you've done, you know, the exams recently, the, the, the A's and the M exams more recently, the, the Rogo platform. So there's that familiarity as well. Now, some people, I saw some mention of the IFRS 105 certificate and others. We've flipped things round. So under the old um, syllabus, the outgoing syllabus, so I didn't mean to go back. Um, we were working across the row. The FRS 105 syllabus um, dealt with micro businesses and it dealt with the financial statements prep and the taxation. The DFS also dealt, well, it dealt with small businesses. It dealt with the financial statements. There wasn't tax computations that were going on there. What the new certificates do is look at the discipline rather than the client. So financial statements is all about financial statements for micro and small and corporation tax is all about taxation for micro and small businesses. <clears throat> and I'll talk about the transition in a moment as to, to if you've done any of the, the old syllabus ones where you stand. The taxation, <coughs> excuse me, is, um, uh, an addition. So we've raised what was there at level three to level four. We've carried forward pretty much all of the old level three syllabus, but we've, we've added in capital gains tax and foreign sources of income to the extent that they are um, encountered by our members with the typical clients. So when we talk about foreign sources of income, we're not talking about advanced tax planning and offshore 
hiding your funds in Bermuda or Luxembourg or wherever. It is just for a small business or a micro business or an individual, what happens if you get, let's say, if you get dividends um, from an, an overseas company? What's the impact of that? All right, so now, if you've got any of those three existing um, certificates under your belt, what does the transition mean? What does the introduction of the new certificates means, mean to you? Now, um, I know in the past there will have been conversations about exemptions. And I think that that's, um, that would be fine if it were the core syllabus, but it, it actually doesn't make so much sense here. Because each of these certificates gives you the license to do a certain amount of work. And if we talk about exemptions, it, it, it kind of muddies the water. But basically, everything that you have earned so far under your practice license, you're still able to do. That's the important thing. So if you have the level three SAT, you can still do self-assessment tax returns for people. But, and Gary mentioned this earlier in, in a different context, but if a client comes to you and said, um, you know, I've been buying and selling assets or I've got income from um, foreign sources, you have to put your hands up and say, I've not studied that, I've not done CPD on it or whatever, uh, I'm not certified to do that and hand that work on to, um, onto a, a, a colleague, a, a peer, you know, hopefully a fellow ICB member who can help you with it. Um, and likewise, you know, particularly you know, the FRS 105, that dealt with micro businesses. There are differences if you're looking at a company that's classed as a small business and vice versa with the DFS. So you can, you can carry on exactly as you are without, um, without fear. But do, do um, as ever, use your professional judgment on, on each assignment that you're offered. If I go on, <coughs> we start, we come back to the diploma. Now, a lot of people are interested in having the, the diploma. It's a, it's a nice you know, certificate to have. Um, and again, the work that you've already done, if you've picked up any of these uh, certificates so far, will count towards the diploma. As I said earlier on, the diploma is three certificates at level four. Now, there's a concession sitting on the level three SAT because you know, we, we've turned it into a level four qualification. It wouldn't be fair for us to say, you must have taken the level four SAT for the diploma. If your work base hasn't changed, then is making you do capital gains tax and, and foreign sources of income for no benefit to yourselves. So the level three will count, only the SAT will count as a level four um, diploma qualification. FRS 105 was a level four certificate, it counts as one certificate towards the diploma, even though there is that crossover between corporation tax and financial statements but it's only one diploma, so that, that, that it's, um, you're not getting two for one with that. Um, and the same with the DFS. It's one diploma, uh, sorry, one certificate level four that you were awarded, it counts as one towards the diploma. So had you done all those three, you're eligible for the, the diploma. If not, um, and you want to get the diploma, then uh, you know, the, obviously top up the number of, of certificates you've got, we will continue to um, we'll continue to develop this suite of certificates at level four. So you know, down, the, down the line, there may be something else that, that starts to grab your fancy. So why would you want the diploma? Well, for a lot of people, as I said, it's, it's nice to be able to put that certificate on the wall that say that you have got learning at level four. You know, all MCB, MICBs have got level three. Level four is a step up, it, it's, it's a higher level of learning. There is the flexibility, as I said, other certificates being added and worked on as we speak. Well, not as we speak, because I'm the one that's working on it and I'm speaking to you just now, but I will later today work on it. Um, and, and furthermore, it, the, the diploma is becoming our entry route for fellowship. So if you've been MICB for two years, and you have the diploma under your belt, 
then that allows you or that will have you um, invited to fellowship and then your MICB becomes FICB. So I've taken up a lot of time talking. I hope that that has been informative. I will take this off your screen and if there are any questions coming in, if they've if built up while I've been talking then, if Gary or someone would relay them. Yeah, Peter, that was brilliant. Thank you very much for that. And just to Pleasure. stress, the reason that we are um, bringing this level in is that this is the sort of stuff that some, not all, but some of our bookkeepers are being asked for. Um, I think small and micro businesses are looking to work more with their bookkeepers and having got a good relationship with their bookkeeper, they don't necessarily want to go outside to a firm of accountants, let's say, for their year-end processes. Some will, and, and it is a bit of a, a, a strange landscape out there where you've got all, all levels of it. But a lot of our members are finding that uh, because of government uh, initiatives that have almost uh, given it to bookkeepers to say, we want bookkeepers to do this, uh, not in quite that wording, but that's the inference, um, I think it's it's becoming increasingly popular. Um, and just to stress something that, that you mentioned, I mentioned earlier, in bookkeeping, you have to do what you feel you are competent to do. You can't go above that. And we had a, I met a few years back now, I got a call from the Financial Reporting Council, which is the people who looks after all of the financial reporting standards. And they said, ah, could you possibly have a word with one of your members who has just signed off a set of accounts as the auditor? Now, those of you who don't know, being an auditor is, is very difficult to become an auditor. It's a huge amount of exams and you have to be registered. And you can't look at, you can't be an auditor until you've done that. Um, so I rang him up and I said, look, you've signed off a set of accounts. He said, oh yes, yes. I said, but you're not an auditor. No. So why did you do it? He said, well, my client asked me to do it. Now the point is, you can't always do what your client asks of you. Some of it might be illegal for a start. Some of it certainly isn't correct. But just because they ask you to do it doesn't mean you have to say yes. And you're, if you explain why you're saying no, your client or your employer uh, will normally accept that and be happy that they're not giving it to you to do um, because you're just not going to do it for them properly. That, that accounts are very, it's, accounts are critical to a business and, and they have to be done by the people who are able to do it. Um, one thing whilst you were on here, Peter, Pedro, who I mentioned earlier, he's actually given us quite a long thing here. I worked as an account in accounts for many years, but that was 20 years ago. I passed the first 10 ACCA exams while I was working in accounts. I've not worked in accounts since then, but I was a business owner director for 20 years until September. I had an accountant and a bookkeeper reporting to me. Basically, he's coming up and saying, I've done no practical work for, say, p and um, but I read and understand accounts. Can I now become an MICB with a practice license? Well, Pedro, uh, the straight answer is, no, not based on that, because bookkeeping is very practical. We need to make sure that you can do it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to start from square one, but I think we, we have roots. You need to make an application based on your past experience, but you will need to sit one of our exams. And it might well be worth um, us talking to you about, say, taking a mock paper, which you can do quietly by yourself without... Any disgrace if you if you don't if you don't pass, but I think it's something that um, you you need to do. We have to be sure that you're as good as every other bookkeeper we've got. And I know you've got the sort of the top end stuff, and you've done this for years. But it's about being the best bookkeeper that you can be, as far as we are concerned. And uh, actually, um, I, I have a feeling you've already linked into uh, training link. Funnily enough, Gary, are you still there? I am indeed. Yes. Yeah, you have to make a lot of decisions on the hoof when our people come to you and say, I've got this, that, two of those, four of those, and one of those, and uh, you, you're there specifically to help them through that, aren't you? Well, that's right, yes. I mean, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, as I said before, we've been doing it for over 20 years now, so we know what the requirements are. And the last thing that we would want to do is put someone onto a course if they're going to struggle with it, if they're not prepared with, with, with the prior knowledge for that. So. 
guess in some cases we can say to someone, okay, look, here's a bit of a skills test. Let's see where you are. And from that, we can then establish at what point that, that person should start. Of course, we also have to negotiate with yourselves in terms of for you to allow them an exemption sometimes to start at that point. Um, I know it's something we've been discussing for a number of years now about trying to put something quite robust in place where we can say absolutely this person is good to go. Uh, we cut through some of the red tape and the time involved in, in doing an exemption and, and potentially get that student or that person studying the correct level so they can progress and, and achieve their goals. I've got a question here from one of your former students saying that they did the self-assessment tax level three with you. Mm -hmm. They'd like to do something which shows them how to do the bits that have been added on to make it a level four. Um, it's a bit uh, unfair probably to ask you straight away, but are you doing any sort of deal for your um, SAT three students so that they can take the new SAT four course and upgrade? We, we can always do something. Um... I know you won't like to hear that, but they don't necessarily have to do an exam. They could actually just take something as a CPD. Uh, no, so it's it. not that they can't do that. Um, as far as we're concerned, they can't offer it on their practice license as a CPD. On, on a practice license, yeah, that's different. I, I thought you just wanted to just update the knowledge, really, on the, the difference between the two. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, we're not sure, but from, by the look of it, they, they've got a practice license and, and they see that as another opportunity to do more year-end work. Yeah. So that'd be great. Um, and we would need to make sure that they've done that. I mean, the reason that people take exams is, as far as we're concerned, that once you've done that, then their professional indemnity insurance covers them for any errors they might make. As long as they've got something that is a certificate for that, then, then that's how that comes. Um, and the other thing is that under the, the new legislation under... Uh, the anti-money laundering rules that I said before, um, by sometime next year, only qualified people will be, we believe, will be able to, to work in a practice. Now, we're not quite sure what that means yet. At the moment, the law says you must not employ anybody within your practice who, is not, who has not proved competence. They just won't tell us what that means. But I understand that he's coming out next year. And actually, that'd be really good for the profession because a lot of people do a bit of training and then decide, oh, I'm a bookkeeper. Um, and it, it's, it's not quite right. But, um, you know, which is why we work with uh, accredited training providers like, like Training Link um, because it's our job to keep them on the rails. You know, they can't just peel off. Um, but anyway, um, so... so you're going to do something for it. So uh, if, if whoever, it was an anonymous call, but um, so whoever was listening, then, then great. You can certainly uh, do something anyway. Uh, can I have some more info on the new payroll qualification? Uh, Peter, are you still around? Not sure he is. Uh, the payroll, yeah, we are. Yes, we I are. am. I am, sorry. I am still around. around. Um, payroll qualification. We are splitting it a little bit, adding some extra bits to it, and also linking it into the apprenticeship. Is is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's there, there's two there's two sides. That the apprenticeship is one, um, which is a completely different um, kettle of fish for us having um, uh, apprenticeships tied through employers and, and training providers. But we've got, in terms of the new payroll um, qualification, we've got uh, a level two um, qualification that comes into is the, the basics of payroll, which will then lead on to the the, the level three, which is um, is pretty much as it as it always has been. So the level two is, I suppose, it's a little bit like in our core qualification with the bookkeeping. We start off with the the fundamental definitions, um, explanations of different aspects of payroll, um, you know, simple things like basic pay, overtime, sick pay, etc. cetera, um, national insurance, PAYE. Um, <clears throat> so to, to have that general awareness of what these all mean before you move on to take the level three qualification. Level three qualification hasn't changed. Um, so I, 
if there's any further clarification in the question on what okay i'll i'll uh, see if we, can do that. we can get some more there's a new payroll coming out. i booked payroll when i booked the old level two three and four so do i need to speak to my provider about that yeah we don't have level four payroll just now what we're looking at for the the next qualification and payroll well we, we we're yet to land on the right level for it but it may be actually level five Yes, I, I think the um, the uh, apprenticeship uh, is going the <clears> next <throat> level and missing four and going to five. And we're trying to figure out uh, at that level what that means because uh, our current qualification is pretty full on uh, and the apprenticeship is also um, you know, a good, robust qualification. The only thing that we're all presuming at the moment is that by moving it up to level five, it goes far more into what I would call almost uh, HR, human resources. It's about um, yeah. you know, people who've got uh, mental problems and all this sort of stuff and how you cope with this and, and rather than straightforward calculation of pay and benefits. I, we're not really sure, but we, we'll keep everybody informed as that moves along there. Uh, Gary, you have a, a payroll course, a training link, which covers everything that we asked for. That's right, yes. Um... It's always work in progress, payroll. Um, yeah. It changes every year. And there's always something else that might get thrown into legislation. But yes, uh, you know, we, we, we're all completely up to date with it. We are we're also aware of the um, where you want to bridge with the apprenticeships as well, uh, which I think is a good idea because um, it's interesting for that extra knowledge to, to be put in there. Um, I know it just makes things a little bit you know, a, a little bit more for a student to do, but it, it, we wouldn't put it in there unless we thought it was it was needed in the industry. So I've, got, I've got somebody here, I passed payroll in 2013 and processed payroll since then. Is there an upgrade covering an uh, auto enrollment and pension processing? Now that, um, we have a textbook available in that. Uh, and do you have a course available in it, Gary? I mean, it's just a question of, um, unfortunately, you, you'd have to pick a book uh, or a or a course and sit through the bits that you already know but look for the different stuff i mean that that's probably the best way of doing it now uh, and to reset that qualification uh, so you could do that as part of cpd uh, uh, with your book but you um if you wanted then to have that uh definite cpd and another certificate then basically sit the exam, exam again i would think at that level that would be the best way and then then everything is uh, finalized you get your certificate and you can prove that you're up to date as you say there, there have been a lot of changes um, but bookkeeping is changing uh, quite a lot at the moment with new technologies coming in and everything else um, and rather than uh, we keep telling our members rather than you say right here's a bit of software i'll you know send it to me on send me your accounts online it's all about here is a piece of software. This is how you use it. This is what I, um, you and I can get out of this. And, and you talk to your client about it. So I think a couple of years back, everybody was thinking bookkeepers and accountants would disappear. Uh, we're not seeing that at all. We're seeing that people are using different tools, but nonetheless, they still want their advice and guidance. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, well, prior to the current very, very unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves. Uh, it was absolutely booming beyond belief beforehand, and I presume that it will, it will start to roll again immediately. We are allowed to continue with our lives whenever that comes. Um, a new power coming in. Yeah, Lauren, again, questions on the payroll. Talk to your provider, uh, absolutely. Once you've got a provider that you can work with and they're good, uh, I always say, yeah, keep in touch with them because if something's coming up, they'll know about it. Uh, and obviously you look uh, on our website, you come to our, some of our member meetings. Uh, we've got one this afternoon, uh, another one in our series, three o'clock, bit like this, but aimed at members. So if, if you want to come along. Uh, something else as well, something of interest for, for many of you will be to uh, tomorrow on our three o'clock meeting, we have a man there who's my guest, Bill Dodwell. Now, Bill is uh, a director at the Office of Tax Simplification. So that's OTS 
It's hidden inside the treasury somewhere down in the bowels of HMRC. And he's coming to talk to us about what his group are trying to do to simplify taxation. And I have a feeling that because of the current lockdown and all of the furloughing and various other things, the government will use this as an opportunity to introduce some of the slightly more radical measures they want to introduce to put us all on a more level playing field. So encourage more people to be, rather than uh, self-employed or limited, so bring something together somehow. That should be good. So if, if those of you who want to come on, it's another free uh, webinar tomorrow. You can come on if you're a member or a student because you're going to be a member shortly, we hope. Uh, and that's, uh, that's at three o'clock tomorrow, Wednesday. There is a standard meeting today at three, which I will be hosting again. And we'll be talking about, presumably, as with so far, lots of furlough questions, lots of eligibility questions, lots of what do I next do next questions. Happy for you all to join in with that. And they'll be carrying on through the week. So on um, Thursday, I have Ian Holloway uh, from an organisation called Sintra. He's going to be talking about payroll and how at the moment he believes we are going to be putting this strange new furlough system through the accounts. Uh, so keeping us that. And then on Friday, we've got, um, at the moment, we're just trying to sort it all out, but I believe Nick Good, who um, he is now uh, with a bank called, um, I forgot the name of the bank now. Revolute. Revolute, that's it. Now, this is one of the new challenger banks. Now, these are non high street banks. Uh, they don't, uh, and they have come onto the market. They're trying very hard to get business customers, and we're going to be talking about what the banks can do, whether or not it's the right thing to do to switch to a challenger bank away from the likes of NatWest and Barclays that are on High Street or were, etc. So there's a lot going on in that. Um, and as somebody said before, what's happening about business builder and everything else, during next week we'll be introducing some of these things, an introduction to that sort of uh, how to build your business, uh, how to start your business and we're working on a program so that we'll start with uh, start build and then scale up because we have a whole range of members uh, from people who have got uh, people who work for businesses then we've got other people who want to start their own business and some will want to work from home with two or three clients we've got others um, you know a couple of members immediately spring to mind who are now empire building, if I can call it that. They've got three or four practices under their wings. They've got 20, 30 employees. They've got five, six, 700 clients, and they are doing big things. And the whole thing about the Institute is that we support you at all levels. So we, we, whoever you are, if you want to just bring up a family and have two or three clients, that's great. If you have finished with your family and, uh, you know, they've grown up, and left home, you know, sort of 40 odd, uh, and then you want to really build your business and, and become a real uh, shaker and mover, we're there for you as well. So that's something please always remember. Um, we've got no open questions at the moment. I think Peter and various other people have been answering the questions in the background. I think we've, we've probably run the course of today's meeting. Don't forget we're doing another one of these tomorrow. And we will send you a note about that and, and exactly what it is we're going to cover. Uh, Gary, just thank you very much for coming on. I know you've been sitting there while um, I talk, as you know, I do have to do that a lot. Uh, I hope you haven't found it too much. Thank you very much for your help. My pleasure. Um, we do work closely with you. We have done for a long time. I mean, obviously, uh, you started your business just after school, I can tell. So consequently, uh, <laughs> um, you, you I mean, this, this is your life, uh, like ours, and so we, we have to work very closely together because we're both aiming to achieve the same goals at the end of the day, and that's all about making other people achieve theirs. So thank you very much for your help. Congratulations, as always, on your uh, multi-award winning organisation. Thank you for coming on today, and uh, we'll, we'll speak again. Thank you. Again sometime. Thank you. And to everybody, really, thank you for coming on and making this uh, first bookkeeping webinar um, such a success. We've had a lot of questions. I think we've answered um, certainly uh, 50 or 60 at the moment it's standing at. We are always happy to take your questions. 
if you want to chat with us 0203 405 4000 or if it's not an urgent call and you just want us to think about it and come back to you send us an email we'll be very happy with that and, and that just goes to customer services at bookkeepers.org.uk and um, thank you Peter I think you've probably already gone but uh, no thank I'm still you. here oh you're still there still Sorry, here I, I was trying to get hold of you before and you sort of disappeared but thank you very much um, uh, relatively new to the role but uh, giving us some exciting new ideas and you know we're we're 24 years old at the moment ICB but uh, we have to be here for at least the next 24 years and you know I think some of the things that you're doing with our syllabuses with our approaches and a great presentation it's it's all going really well it all bodes well for the future so I think that uh, our members are investing their time in study are certainly going to be supported by us uh, as, as strongly as ever and uh, as we move forward. So thank you very much for that. Thank you all. I uh, hope to see some of you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah, thanks everyone on the call. Thank you. Bye-bye.